Want to refresh your bedroom without spending a lot of money? Today I'm going to show you how you can use Dollar Tree items to get a high-end look in your bedroom. Several high-end sites have these wood sculptural pieces and they're really expensive and I thought let's try recreating that with some Dollar Tree items. So for this DIY you're going to need wood cutouts. There's one that's in the $5 section and then there's also one that's $1.25. And then I also picked up two of these wood blocks. I also picked up a pack of these two hooks in the pegboard section. Now on my smaller wood piece, there's a hanger on there. I used my wire cutters to remove the staples from the hanging piece. Now on both of the wood pieces, I really liked that texture on the side. So I knew I was gonna add paint to the center, but I didn't want to cover up that wood texture. So I started by wrapping frog tape all around the edges. I made sure I completely covered it. And I did that on both of my wood slices. So I had a plan for doing this paint technique, but to be honest, I didn't know exactly how it was going to turn out. So what I did was I got a low dish and I filled it with a cream colored sample paint that I already had. To that sample paint, I added in some white and black paint pour paints that you can buy at Dollar Tree. I just sprinkled those on and then I used a dowel rod to move the paint around. Next, I took my wood slice and I dipped it straight down into the paint and then I pulled it back up. Now what I realized by doing this first technique is you really only get the base color paint when you do this. So this is a process where you're gonna to have to dip it in twice. So I started by having that cream color on for the first layer. So then when I dipped it in the second time, I added in more white and black paint and swirled it around. And the second time I dipped it in, that's when I really picked up those colors of the white and black. So press it down and pull it straight back up. Now this just created such a cool texture on this piece and I let it dry completely overnight. I did the exact same thing with my other wood slice. I set it in once to get that base cream color. Then I added in some more white and black and swirled that around with my stick, put it in again and pulled it straight up. So while this was drying, with my wood blocks, I stained these to make them kind of a medium wood. To stain the wood blocks, I'm gonna use a foam brush to wipe on the stain and pull off any excess with a paper towel. I'm also gonna take those rings that I bought and I'm gonna spray both sides of those with a matte black spray paint. So the next day I removed the painter's tape from the edges of my wood. Now some of the paint had kind of gotten under the edges, so I used one of my scraping tools to scrape off any excess paint. Now with those rings that I had, those are gonna be kind of like the stable bases for both of my wood slices. So I added some E6000 to the bottom part and I also added some to the back and I'm gonna place my wood slices in those rings. And then I flipped them upside down. I made sure there was a lot of E6000 on the back and I let that dry for several hours. Now with my wood blocks, I needed a supporting piece to the back of that, so I used a craft stick. These are craft sticks you can pick up from Walmart. These are really great to have because I feel like I use them in so many different projects. I'm gonna hot glue my craft stick to the bottom of my wood block, and then after the rings had a chance to dry with the glue on there, I'm going to set them up. I'm gonna add hot glue to the top of my craft stick, and then I'm gonna place my wood slice so it's kind of leaning against that back craft stick, but it's supported by that bottom ring. And then let that dry completely. Do that with both of your wood slices. And then I don't know about you, but I absolutely love the way these turned out. And I feel like this is an inexpensive way that you can have those high-end sculptural pieces. My daughter is away for the week and I wanted to surprise her with this new curtain light from Govi. She absolutely loves LED lights and this is gonna be such a big hit. Any product that I pick up from Govi is always packaged really nicely. I'm gonna pull out all the components and lay it out on the bed. Govi provides several ways that you can hang up the curtain light. I decided to go with the 3M strips. Once you decide where you want it to be, I started in the middle. So I put 3M strips on the middle pieces and push those to the top of the wall. I'll put on every other one until they're all put on the top of my wall. 
I'll run the cord down and stick it in place. Once I plug it in, there's also a 3M strip that you can stick on the wall. You can download the easy to use app. The curtain light has preset light effects for everyday life. There are endless presets to choose from, from stars to sunset, bubbles, mushrooms. You can even do holidays with a Christmas tree and my favorite was the countdown. You can even DIY your own shave. The best part about the Govi curtain light is it's going to be on sale for Prime Day. I will link it down in the description box so you can go check it out. If you're needing a fun and sleek floor lamp, I want you to consider this one by Govi. It's their cylinder floor lamp and it does so many neat things. You're going to connect the stem to the base of the light. Then you're going to add on two more pieces up top. This took no time to put together. You can use the same great Govi Home app that you used for your curtain light for the floor lamp. It has 40 animated patterns to choose from. You can also use normal white light that works great for daily use. It has a reading light, a work light, and so many fun settings, so it really works no matter what you're doing throughout the day. One of the coolest features is the lamp reacts to your voice. The Govi Cylinder Floor Lamp will also be on sale for Prime Day. I will link all the details for you down in the description box below. And I wanna thank Govi for sponsoring today's video. I've been trying to introduce my girls to all of some of my favorite movies from when I was a kid. So the other night we were watching Princess Diaries and there's a scene in the movie where Mia and her mom are doing this balloon art on canvas and it looks so much fun. So I had this idea, what if we tried to recreate that and actually see how easy it is to do? So I don't know if anyone's ever gonna wanna try this DIY, but it's gonna be really entertaining to watch me try. So let's talk supplies. First, I changed into something that I'm okay getting paint on because I don't know how much paint's gonna go everywhere. I also picked up black poster board. That's what we're gonna use as our base. You could also use canvas if you wanted. And then for the paints, I wasn't sure if I should use regular acrylics, but I grabbed my paint pour paints. These are from Dollar Tree. The other thing that you need to pick up are some balloons, some funnels. I got all of these different colorful ones off of Amazon. I also picked up some darts off of Amazon. This will be interesting. And then my balloon pump. I use this with so many different projects. Again, it's off of Amazon. I'll link it for you. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is try to fill up our balloons with the paint. So I think this is gonna be the trickiest part. If we can get this down, we should be good to go. I've been testing out how to fill up the balloons and I think I have the strategy down. So you're gonna take your balloon and put the funnel inside. Then you're gonna go in with your paint pour paint and you're gonna do maybe like two squirts. You're gonna let the paint run down into your funnel. Then you're going to pull the funnel off. And this is the part that could be really messy. So if you have a hand pump, I think it would be less messy, but I've determined with my electric one, I'm just going to turn it this way and then press down to fill it up just a little bit. Okay. And to be honest, the less time it's on the pump, the better, because that's less time the paint can splatter everywhere. Then the part that's a little bit messy is tying it. You can see I have paint all over my hands, but you're simply just going to tie your balloon. So if you do this, I would do it outside or make sure you have a drop cloth down. And then you just wanna make, I don't know, we'll probably make about 10 more of these. We got all of our balloons filled up for our poster boards. Now it's time to attach them. So I'm gonna be using some of my push pins that I use for sewing, and I'm just gonna put them all over the board before we take them outside to try to break them. So with these top ones, I put them really high at the top, so I'm hoping that they kind of hang down. That way I get paint all the way to the top of my piece. So I have all the balloons on this one canvas. Now my theory is if I put them sort of at the top, the paint will run down after they open. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but that's kind of my theory. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my other poster board. Now we're finally at the fun part. We're gonna take these outside and see if we can pop them with our darts. All right, we're outside, so let's get to popping. I think I should start with the larger balloons first. The real challenge is going to be how long it takes us to hit them. Okay, that was uh, one. Oh. Same spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was close. So that didn't work, so I'm just going to try to throw a bunch at once and we'll see how that goes. <gasps> we did it! <laughs> I popped one! Yes! yes. 
That actually looks really cool. That took me, I don't know, maybe 20 darts to get our first one. We got 20 more balloons to go. That was so much fun to do. I'm pretty sure I have paint splatter all over me. So now I'm just going to remove the excess balloons and then we'll let them dry. I feel like this look is totally different than anything else I've done. I love the paint splatter look. It's just so fun. And here's a look at the balloon art styled in my bedroom. It's fun to create seasonal decor that you can change up in your space. And when I saw this seashell tray at Dollar Tree, I thought this would be great to sit on my bedside to put jewelry on. I wanted to keep the top of the tray the way it was because it has this really cool iridescent tone to it. But with the bottom, I wanted to give it more of a modern look. So I'm gonna be using Quick Crete. So I'm gonna take my Quick Crete and mix it with water in a small bowl. I also wanted this Quick Crete to have a different color. So I added in some paint mixed it around to adjust the color until I was happy with it. Next, I'm gonna use a foam brush to paint my Quick Crete mixture onto the back of my tray. Now with this, you just wanna make sure you completely cover it so that if you look at it, there's no areas that don't have Quick Crete on it. And then keep it upside down and let it dry overnight. The next day, you're gonna come back and you have a really modern tray that you can set out in your room. Now, if you have books that you keep in your bedroom, you may wanna consider this next DIY. So we're gonna make some bookends. What you need to pick up at Dollar Tree are four of these wood plaques. I'm gonna start by using my miter saw to cut the larger one. So I'm just gonna cut off a little piece at the bottom, honestly where it starts to curve because I want this piece to be as long as possible. Next, I'm going to take my second piece and I'm gonna cut that to where it's about one third of the way through. Honestly, I didn't do it super precise. So that's gonna give me three pieces. I have a large one, a medium one, and a smaller one. I'll repeat those steps cutting two more pieces so that I can create two bookends. Then once I have all my pieces cut down, I'll sand those pieces so there's no rough edges. And then I really wanted to keep that wood look. So I picked up three stain colors that I could do to create almost a natural, a medium, and a darker stain. So I have a natural color, a medium stain, and my darker one. And with the smaller piece, I'll stain that with the natural. I'll put it on with a foam brush and wipe off any excess with a paper towel. I'll do the same with the medium toned stain on the middle piece, and then I'll add stain to the darker piece. Now that I have all my pieces stained, you wanna let this dry overnight so that all the stain is dry before you add in any glue. The next day, I'm gonna come in and add E6000 to the back of my smaller wood pieces, and I'll put those down, making sure the bottom of them are level so that they can sit up really nicely. And here's how they look with my books in my bedroom. Make sure you paint that subscribe button. If you're watching me on your phone, the subscribe button is right next to my channel name. Click the red subscribe button so it goes from red to gray. You can also click the notification bell so you can see more videos like my Dollar Tree DIYs, home packs, and room makeovers. Have you guys seen this trend where people are putting moss on wall art? I've been wanting to do this trend now for a few months and finally did for this video. So I picked up a canvas from Dollar Tree. They have these $3 ones in the plus section. Now, most of my moss I bought at Dollar Tree. They have honestly like three or four different varieties. I bought all of the moss that they had for this canvas. I also picked up an additional bag of moss from Michaels. So to start this out, I wanted to create kind of a cascading pattern with the moss that I bought at Michael's because it had these raised circles and I thought that would be kind of cool. So that's what I started doing. So I just took the moss in the bag and hot glued it to my piece, trying to make sure that there was no white still showing through. 
Next, to go along the edges, I wanted to section off different colored mosses. I used a Mod Podge and a foam brush and put the Mod Podge down all over my piece. Now, I was a little concerned if the Mod Podge was gonna hold everything down, so in some areas, I actually added in hot glue as well as my Mod Podge. I do feel like the Mod Podge probably would have been okay on its own, but then I just went through and I started creating. I used sections of one colored moss, and then I would go in with another colored moss until I was happy with the way that it looked. So once I had the piece completely covered, I picked it up and leaned it against the wall so that I could really see where I had holes missing. So if there was a white piece, I used my hot glue and I added in more moss or more pieces. I also felt like on the edges, I could add in more. So I added in more using hot glue to the edges. Once it was completely covered, I let it dry and then hung it up in my bedroom. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment the word of the day, which is Dollar Tree. I saw this planter on a high-end site and absolutely loved the gray color and the texture, so I wanted to try to recreate it. I found this glass container at my local thrift store. I thought it was perfect as a planter size. Now, how am I gonna create the texture on it? One of my favorite things to use is Quickcrete. You can pick this up at Home Depot. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the Quickcrete and mix it with water. And you really want this to be a thin consistency. Honestly, I started putting it onto my planter before it was thin enough and it just kind of looked globby. So make it really thin. Then you're going to take a paper towel, dip it in your quick create, and you're gonna start dabbing it all over your piece. Now you do not wanna completely cover it. Honestly, you want to really just put it in certain areas so that you kind of get that hint of texture all around your base. Once you like the way it looks, you're gonna set it on something to dry overnight. The next day, you can come back in and paint it that dark gray color. I had a sample paint from when we were painting the outside of our house that was in this dark gray. That's what I'm gonna be using. I'll use a paintbrush to add it to the outside of my planter. Now you are going to need to do two coats, so let one of your coats dry and then do the next coat. And here's how it looks in my bedroom. Every time I'm shopping, no matter what section I'm in, I'm always thinking of ways that I can DIY and create things inexpensively. So when I was at Ikea, I found these placemats and I thought these are so cool. I love the texture and they would make great wall art pieces. So I bought two of them. I wanted to add a little bit to them. So I went in my craft room and I found some green macrame that I already had. And I'm gonna start by wrapping that around one of my pieces. So I'll wrap it around probably about seven seven or eight times and I'll hot glue it to the back. Make sure you don't put any hot glue on the front. And then I'm gonna create another section where I wrap the green around again. Wrap it around seven or eight times, hot glue it in the back. I'm gonna start with one piece of cream macrame and I'm going to wrap it over the bottom green piece and over the top of my top green piece. I'll come back down and put it underneath the bottom green piece. And I'm gonna repeat those steps two more times. I'll move the pieces of cream macrame around so that they're right next to each other. And then I'm going to hot glue the cream macrame on the back. I'm gonna repeat all of these same steps with my second piece of wall art, but I'm just going to move the green pieces down just a little bit. You can hang this wall art up with command strips or with a nail on your wall. Yeah. 
Dollar Tree has some really great clear acrylic containers and I have this acrylic organizer with drawers in my bathroom that I spent a lot of money on several years ago. So I wanted to create one with Dollar Tree items. What you're gonna need for this DIY is six of the clear acrylic drawers. We're gonna create a makeup or jewelry organizer. So what you're gonna do is remove any of the tags on the front, then we're going to line them up. To attach them together, you wanna use E6000 because this creates a really strong bond. And we're going to put the majority of our E6000 on the sides of our containers. You can put a little bit on the top, but you don't want it to show through since it is clear. Let this dry completely overnight, and then you can put in items that you need to store in your room. The next time you're shopping at Dollar Tree, don't forget to look at their canvas prints. They're always updating these and you may just find a few great options. I found these terracotta prints and I felt like they looked really high end. And when you add these in with other decor, they look really nice. Here's how I styled them in my bedroom. I hope you got some great ideas for DIYs you could do to update your bedroom. I would love to know which of these DIYs was your favorite. So leave the number of your favorite DIY down in the comments. And don't be afraid to try that project you've always wanted to try. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I hope you subscribe because I wanna see you back here. Bye.